It wouldn't be a Souls game if very important items weren't very easy to miss. For example, the Whetstone Knife. As you play through the game, you're going to get dialogue saying that you can use Ashes of War at a Mark of Grace to change the skills on a weapon. Well, if you never find the Whetstone Knife, you never get the text on that menu, and then you have no idea what Ashes are even used for or how you can change the skills, and then it makes everything very confusing. Well, a lot of things in the game are like this, including key items, and that is what this video is about. So if it helps you in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below, as well as some tips to help out new players. So yeah, let's go and check out where we are on the map. Oh, we're in the starting area. That's right, Gate Front Ruins is where you find the Whetstone Knife, and don't feel bad if you missed it. I didn't get it until after the first major boss, and by then you can actually not even need it because once you get the blacksmith at the table of lost grace he'll just do the ashes for you but it's kind of annoying to go there every time so the whetstone knife will be nice to where you can switch out your skills on the fly but let's go and show you where it is it's in these ruins over here and again that's why i'm not going to blame you and hopefully not many other people will this place is spooky if you're a low level player and especially if you've never played a dark souls game before but it's right there and that kind of also sets the mood that any little crack or cave or stairwell could have a very important item down it, and if you miss it, oh, that sucks. And you might even get locked out of the story for a bit until you explore the area a bit more. So you go in here, you find it in the chest, and that is going to be the whetstone knife. Fortunately, like I said, it's not super important at a certain point, but it does get really confusing when the game's telling you how to do things and you don't have the items to do it, and the game doesn't even tell you how to get those items in the first place. Let's move on. After that, we have tailoring tools, another important key item that unlocks a selection at your mark of grace. So altering garments, it's not like the craziest thing in the game, but it can be a nice quality of life. So what it does is it allows you to make equipment lighter, but it does reduce the stats. However, it's gonna be really good for the equipment load. So if you wanna have some like heavier armor, but you don't have the endurance to wear it, you can actually alter it, and then that might help out with being able to use it pretty nice little item. So let's go and see where you find it, and it's going to be in the coastal cave. It's going to be at the bottom. It's going to be a boss fight. So yeah, you gotta, and again, just like checking caves, opening chests, you might find some very important stuff. A little tricky to get, get to the coastal cave once you get there. Uh, yeah, that's all it is to it, and you got a key item at the bottom. Something else you want to find is the Wondrous Physic because it introduces potion mixing. Now you only get one dose per visit to the Mark of Grace and you will need Crystal Tears. That's not what this video is about, so maybe just look it up on the wiki. Maybe I'll do a video in the future. But as you find Crystal Tears, you can actually get benefits for a one-time use potion that are really strong. So increasing strength, increasing stamina, getting dexterity, intelligence, combo, charge attacks, damage negation you can also restore more hit points or like a set amount of hit points and then that's just an extra potion to have so you want this and you can find it in the third church which is going to be this one right here so third church of marika go in there it's in front of like the statue and yeah if you if, if visit landmarks find cool things very important stuff just hanging out after that, we're going to go to the round table and talk to the twins because the game is giving us some weird prompts again about summoning. I can't do it. I have these summoning ashes, but I don't know what's going on. It says I need a bell. It can't possibly be this thing that only costs 100 runes, right? Well, it is. Buy the spirit calling bell because that unlocks summoning. It's that simple. It's that dumb. You can also go and buy a summon for the Lone Wolf Ashes. It's pretty cool. It's pretty good. But you're probably going to have some other ashes that you end up finding for the summons. And that's all there is to it. You equip the summon. I have one right here. And then you put that in your pouch. If you also struggle to use the pouch, you just go over here and then you press the Y button. And then that lets you do things so I can bind some kind of summons to it. And if you have the bell, it just works. So if summons are available, done. Yeah. Again, like you could just so sillily miss something, especially if you've never played a Souls game before, like I did. I didn't use my first summon until after beating the second major boss. I thought it was like some kind of special class and it was something I wasn't going to mess with because I didn't want to do magic or anything, but no, you just get it for free. It can, whatever you can throw them out, whenever it's like highlightable, you throw it out there, you get it, boom, done, easy, just like that. This dude's a Chad. I love him. He bailed me out of many boss fights. You do the same. 
Now the next one isn't as much a key item as it is a key area. So the Waypoint Ruins. Very easy to miss. You look at it, there's garbage in there, some enemies I don't care about. Nope, gotta go down the stairwell, gotta find a nice little cave area. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit of a boss, but just remember the name Selen. You're gonna thank me later. And now we have a spoiler warning because we're going to be talking about things that are a little later on in the story. Nothing crazy, it's after the second major boss. So you might find yourself at this gate and you don't know how to get through. It says you need some kind of key. Well, this is going to be a major part of the story. And to find the key, you need to head to this island right here. There's a dragon. The dragon's spooky. But don't worry, you don't need to defeat the dragon, you just need to get behind him and then steal all the items over there. Um, sneaking around can work, but there's a chance you wake him up. I personally parkoured from the back. Uh, I don't remember exactly how I did, I think it was like one of these, and then you just kinda, just bam, double jumps. And eventually you can kinda get in, and then you loot everything over here. This guy has the key, GG easy, and then that's going to get you into this area to go for the story. And then the last thing in this video you should probably do is use Godric's Great Rune. Now, Godric is technically like the first major boss, but I'm considering him the second one because, come on, market counts. Either way, let's go and use the rune. So, we are at the bridge in Stormvale Castle and we are making our way all the way over here. So, you make it over there. You use the lift, you get to the top, and then that is where you can use Godric's Great Rune, and that gives you a boost to all of your stats. And there's going to be some shenanigans along the way. Just dodge it. You can use the terrain to stop the arrows and you just run past the big melee dudes. So yeah, the takeaway should be that you want to explore everything. Like these. These are boss arenas. You get rare weapons, you get new spells, you get all kinds of cool things from it. Also, golden seeds. There's tree, like the little golden trees are everywhere. Churches, that's where you get the tears. The tears increase the effectiveness of your flasks. It just never ends. And then even like some crazy extra things end up going down, like this uh, crystal tunnel. At the bottom of this, there's a bell bearing. You give the bell bearing to the twins, and then it unlocks stuff for her shop. This unlocks smithing stones 1 and 2. So you can buy tier 1 and 2 smithing stones once you complete that. Problem, it's pretty challenging. You need to have a strong character or a decent level or just be really good at Dark Souls games. So that could be another thing. Like, you could be trying an area. You could just be getting slapped out of it. There's actually, like, a really strong item inside of it. Eh, just come back later and hope for the best. I don't know where you get the three and four ones, though. At this time, more guides in the future. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with Elden Ring right now. I think I understand what the game is going for, so I'm going to make more progress, actually find the maps, be at the game. Alright, so guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.